Good morning, everybody. Uh, we're gonna go to Vienna today. Um, I'm very excited. Fritz Wieninger is one of my favorite winemakers and uh, Vienna's an amazing place. And his winery is up on the hills around uh, the city. And so we're gonna see that in the background. And he's gonna show us how to prune. Uh, he did a video in German earlier and uh, I'm fascinated by pruning because you really decide, you, I mean, you, you influence the by what you do during your pruning. Hi, James. Hi, Elizabeth. Uh, hello, Fritz. Hi, Jeff. Oh, is it foggy or is that just low clouds? No, it's, well, it's high fog and uh, it's not the nicest day today, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's okay. Anytime we're looking at Vienna and your winery and your vines is a good day. Okay. Well, <laughs> not today or <laughs> not as sunny as usual. That's okay. Your your video you did last week was beautiful. So if they want to see, go back and you can look at the sunshine there. But that's still Vienna in the background? Yes, yes, that's Vienna. Uh, but Amazing. We are at the Pisanberg. Okay. Uh, the side on the left-hand side of the Danube River. So okay. it's a little further away from the center of the city. And, uh, of course, also due to the fog, uh, you only can see a little bit of the uh, bigger buildings and not a lot. It's not the perfect day today. I'm sorry. That's, that's okay. I, I'm, we're here to see you prune and to learn about pruning. And again, that video you did last week is beautiful. And, uh, and I, we talked way back in the spring of last year. There's a sunny video too. I'll post that in my stories. Um, yeah. First, I want to say thank you to Sophie for helping me out with this and for doing the camera. She's great. Sophie is here with me. <laughs> Hello, I'm glad you put yourself on camera so I can put a face with your name. It's so nice to see you. <laughs> um, so can you tell us a little bit about Biesenberg and how does that um, differ from your other vineyards? Oh, I can't hear you, Fritz. I don't know if the sound went off for a second. No, I can't hear. Hmm. Hi, Brooks. Is that Janie? Um, I can't hear. Hmm. I'm sure I have complete confidence in Sophie that she'll fix it. <laughs> if you want to come go off and come back on, that might work too. I don't know. So, who knows? Guys, stay tuned. You saw what a beautiful uh, vineyard he has. And again, overlooking Vienna. Um, it's a little foggy, but we're here to see the vines up close. And he's such a good teacher and explainer of things. So stay tuned. He'll be right back. Um, <clears throat> hey, Janie. <laughs> um, here he comes back. Guys, stay tuned. We're going to be pruning in Vienna. Hello. I'm back. You're back. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Sophie just ducked out of the back. For God's sake, I have Sophie with me. <laughs> <laughs> We're very thankful for her. Yeah. So I was asking, what's the, you're in Biesenberg, the, the vineyard Biesenberg. How is that different from your other uh, vineyards? Well, uh, basically, it's the soil uh, that is different. Biesenberg uh, is, the, well, the higher uh, elevations are just behind me here. Uh, it's not high, this is not steep hillsides, uh, but the higher elevations uh, are main, mainly based on the same rock, uh, this alpine rock, such okay. as Nussberg. Okay. But the vineyards um, um, on the Viennese side, because uh, part of Biesenberg is not Vienna, but the, the, the vineyards are in Vienna, and that is um, on Lös, on very light, sandy soil. Uh, along the Danube Valley uh, for hundreds of thousands of years, there always was wind from the west and uh, the sand was taken in the curves of the river, especially in the drier summer times. Okay. And uh, th that sand settles down after hillsides. Uh, so this eastern tail where we are now of the Bisenberg is the vineyard sites um, of Vienna or the Bisenberg sites, vineyard sites of Vienna. Okay. And that is the big difference to Nussberg, the other uh, hillside. Uh, can you see it? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. a little bit on the 
horizon, you can see this hill, and the other side is the southern exposed side uh, of the Bisanberg, uh, of the okay. Nussberg, pardon me. And then how um, does that differ in, air, is, the, is it more aromatic because of the little more sand, or yes. structurally on, on the outside uh, is more structured? Yes, the Loess gives um, a stronger fruit, a primary fruit to the wines, and the hint more acidity. Okay. So the wines are fresher, uh, louder, uh, but not as mineralic and creamy uh, or spicy uh, as uh, the wines from the Nussberg side. This okay. is the big difference. Some varieties uh, like it a lot, uh, such as mm, Grüner Welt Nina is, is, is good from both sides. Uh, Chardonnay, for example, on the Nussberg side, it's a little more quiet, quiet uh, a little more shy, okay. uh, not to say a little more boring. <laughs> on the Bisanberg side, it's more extroverted, fruity, more citric in the aromas and a little bit more fresh because also of the uh, acidity content. So okay. this is the, the basic uh, difference of these two uh, vineyard sites or okay. these two hills. Um, I want to give a shout out to some winemakers on here. My friend Nico Irisu in, in Gaillac and Anne Charlotte in Chateauneuf du Pape are on here. And I just want to say hi to them. Um, uh, Fritz, one of the things too that I like about your wine, the Nussberg, I always like let it sit for a few years. Does that age better because of the structure or is it the old vines? I think it's the old vines uh, that make the big difference uh, in aging. Okay. I think young vines are, they can be beautiful, especially as young uh, wines, yes. uh, but not with the same aging potential. This is my uh, experience over the years. Um, I don't know if this is as a scientific background, but uh, it's my impression, my personal if, impression. If you say it, we're going to take it for fact because I, I trust you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and could you speak about, I don't think a lot of people might not know what Gemischersatz is. Could you explain that? And then you do make some single varietal wines. Explain those a little bit, please. Yeah, yeah. Well, Gemischersatz, this is the wine of my region of Vienna. Vienna is the only million city in the world that has its own wine region within its city limits. Uh, and Gemischter Satz, which is like a field blend wine of different grape varieties in one and the same vineyard. This is our uh, most typical uh, wine here in this region. Also our uh, style of appellation, we have, uh, we call that DAC. Um, and in Vienna, only Gemischter Satz is part of this DAC system. It must be a minimum of three different grape varieties okay. that are grown in one and the same vineyard all together all year long and then harvested all at the same time. No matter if there's some overripeness or if there is some underripeness, you have to catch the right window or right date of picking uh, and then you have, of course, a little bit of overripeness because Tramina is earlier, uh, Pinot Blanc is earlier, uh, and you have some underripeness. As long as it is not unripeness, uh, I'm fine with it, uh, such as Welsh Riesling or Riesling uh, that add uh, some freshness, some acidity uh, to the whole wine. Uh, or also, which is more and more these uh, days important, lower uh, the total alcohol a little bit because of the not so high maturity. Gotcha. Um, it's and... always white wine, by the way. Uh, in the meantime, they are changed even the law that uh, red wine as gemischter Satz is not possible. This was in older days, it was also used. Uh, to have red gemischter Satz uh, wines, uh, but that is uh, nowadays not allowed anymore, which is very okay. I don't believe in the red so much uh, because the uh, play or this game between underripeness and overripeness with reds in our climate is not so ideal. This is with white wine, this works really much better. Okay. And um, I want to say hi to Ginny Povel, who just tuned in from South Africa. So we're, we're all over Hello. the world right now. <laughs> hi. And um, the, I just have to say that Gemisha Satz was a revelation to me, and then your wines in particular. And you know I love the Neusberg, and I always pair it with a lot of vegetables. It's, it's a great, because it's that field, the field blend, it, it just pairs so nice with so many things. 
Um, and I want you to explain this properly, but in my understanding, a field blend in the old days was an insurance policy that something yeah. would be ripe, something might be overripe, something might be green, but you'd always end up with a good wine. Well, uh, not only uh, that you end up with a good wine, uh, I think in the past or in, uh, if you look far back, uh, then it is more important that you end up having some wine. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, it, 100 years ago, it was not so easy to grab the telephone and order uh, a, a, a truckload of wine from somewhere right. uh, because you are thirsty. They had, if they did not harvest wine, they had no wine to drink. Uh, and that is not a funny life, not now and not 100 years ago so um, imagine you have one variety like we are here in a grüner weltliner vineyard uh, and all these uh, vines uh, flower or bloom at the same day or same night all right, yeah. uh, and exactly in that period you have bad weather and you harvest only 10 percent of regular what can happen, this happens occasionally, in a gemischter Satz, this cannot happen because the vineyard would not bloom uh, in one night or one day. It would bloom over up to a period of two weeks, uh, right. that long. And uh, two weeks in June, uh, when we have the blooming, that never uh, had happened, that we had always bad weather. Mm -hmm. But one or two days of bad weather, that can, happily, uh, can easily happen. Yeah. Wow, that's that's a really good explanation of that the the real reality of it. Um, I know we're here to talk about pruning, but one more thing that just really struck yeah. me that if people, I was just very struck. You can stay in a hotel in Vienna and take the tram or a taxi to the winery, and so it's the best city you want to go to if your partner or family's not into wine. It's so great. But there is a Heuriger. Can you explain the Heuriger to us? Well, Heuriger, uh, this is first of all uh, a kind of wine. Uh, or, a, yeah, well, a name for a wine. Uh, it's the wine from the last vintage. It's a kind of a Beaujolais Nouveau, uh, but as a white wine in the Vienna region. That is a Heuriger. And so we also call these wine taverns that are usually owned by the winemaking families as Heuriger because there it is sold. This kind of wine is sold. And these wine taverns are called Heuriger are, for example, not allowed uh, to buy wine. You have to produce it yourself. You have to prove that you have your own vineyard and that, that you did harvest uh, your own wine and so on. You are not allowed uh, to sell beer, for example. And at the places in the vineyards, this is the new places out there where little tractor garages are used during the summertime uh, to to, uh, to to sell out wine by the door. Uh, people sit around there in the middle of the vineyard. It's even just allowed to sell uh, cold things um, to eat, uh, like a, a, a bread with some cheese or um, a, a salad, a potato salad or things like that. No warm things, only very simple cold things. But lots of people love these places. Viennese are very connected to wine and love to drink wine. They are not all uh, super professionals with wine. Uh, often they just uh, can say they like it or they don't. But one thing is for sure, they all love wine. Uh, it's in their genes when they are born. Viennese uh, love wine. This is wonderful to live here. <laughs> it's, um, that's, it's true. It's so amazing. And, and uh, while we talk about food, I still remember that place you took us to dinner that um, I had the cabbage and pasta and I think bacon. It was, it was a low tavern with John um, and we had an amazing meal. I always remember that. But a friend of mine just opened a taco place. She's making her own tortillas. She's yeah. from Vienna. She came to New York many years ago. And now she opened, I'll post in my stories because she's making Super. tacos and really good tortillas in Vienna. And Sophie, you have to go down there. I'm not All sure right. Fritz is into tacos. <laughs> I, I tell her. Okay. <laughs> well, maybe we do an exchange uh, one day. Do some tacos here in Vienna and sell some Liptauer in New York City. <laughs> there you go. That would be amazing. Okay, I'm going to work on that. So let's talk about pruning. Um, when do you yeah. do it and why do you do it? It's during the winter time. Um, <laughs> it's uh, because the, the best quality of fruit, the best grapes, uh, would grow um, in, the, in the shoots that are now 
wurden. Uh, okay. How can I explain here? Oder no, I give my I give my telephone to Sophie. Okay. And I show you. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, you can see me perfectly. Last year's uh, shoot was this one, <clears throat> and uh, out of uh, these eyes or buds, the green shoots come out. This is okay. now wooden, but during the season, this was green. And here and here uh, have been for sure grapes, and these grapes are quality wise uh, the best. Here's nice. another one. Uh, where also grapes uh, must have been. Uh, to assure that we get good quality, uh, we need these strong, not too thick, not too thin shoots uh, that are now wooden. We want to come back to the base of the vine, not to move over the years too far away from the base uh, mm -hmm. and count these buds because every bud here is bringing a new shoot. And okay. uh, it looks very dramatic, but it is necessary. A vine has to be cut pretty tr uh, strong, so yeah. very short. This is important. We cut away almost everything, only a little bit stays. Okay. And because all the vigor has retreated into the, the base and the roots, right? Yeah, the base means, well, last year it was cut here. And this year, I would cut here and use this, for example, as the new shoot. Then uh, what is the next work is to put that down mm -hmm. and now find this here. And that is the shoot on this side for next year. Okay. Here is an, a butt, here is a butt, here is a butt. Here's a bud here, and everywhere will shoots come out okay. in end of April, short like this, end of May, probably already up like here, or wow. it depends how the weather is. We, this is not California. <laughs> uh, sometimes we have cold springs, uh, then it's uh, uh, not so, so quick, uh, much slower. Sometimes we have wonderful springs, like last year, Everything shoots and grows like hell, and we don't know what to do first. But the system <laughs> is this, that we always prune back to the base. Uh, everything else goes away. Fritz, how, how did you decide that that's the one you're going to keep? Yes, and she must have been in this. This, this one here? Yeah. Because this um, is uh, looking from the size very nice and also from the position uh, ah, it's very okay. nice. Okay. It's always good when you have to, to make a curve a little bit oh. um, because then the power stays a little bit back. Oh. If, you, if you have it too straight, then the flow goes directly to the end. And wow. this eye will grow the quickest. Uh, we want to have all the shoots grow as uh, equal as possible. Uh, and therefore, I choose this one. Wow. On the other side, I don't know. I take off the old one. This is mm -hmm. the, the one from last year. And then, I don't know. Which one should we take? What would you say? <laughs> oh gosh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna get involved with this. I'm too afraid. <laughs> uh, also important is we do not want to cut this old vine. This old, mm. uh, 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 not oak. Uh, Trunk. Wood, this old wood. What's the word for that? I don't know. We don't want to make an <clears throat> injury on that. Okay. I would say we use this one. Okay. Maybe a little too long. Let's make it like this. Okay. Because why this one? It is stays upright completely. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have to bend it like a curve. 
so it gets shorter. Mm -hmm. uh, here is the next one that is already very close to here. So I think this one is a good choice. Okay. Uh, one here for next year, just as a reserve. And uh, here is one that has to go. So now this one is finished. Okay, so it's just two that you leave. This we leave and that we leave. Okay. And then you when see, do you come and tie them down? In a week or in a month or tomorrow? Uh, yeah, we, usually we start um, early in, in March. Oh, okay. This is better when it's not so cold. I see. Because you, you have to use your fingers. <laughs> you cannot use uh, gloves. Right. Um, and when you start in the morning at uh, zero temperature, uh, then it, this is not fun. Also, the wood moves better gotcha. when it's a little bit warmer. Uh, it's easier to 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 uh, bend, uh, bend mm. it down yeah. when it's a little warmer. We start this year probably the eighth of uh, of March, okay. and we want to finish that um, in five weeks. Early April we should be finished because then uh, the buds might start to move, and all this work, this binding down, has to be done as long as. Uh, the buds are still in the in the winter uh, quiet uh, phase. Uh -huh. This wow. is important. So, this does not look very easy and not very nice. Unfortunately, here I do something unconventional. I sh I cut a short one. Mm -hmm. This we do not bind here. We leave it like this. Here, we cut the short one just for next year. Maybe here we get a nice shoot and next year we can cut this. You always have to think about uh, the future, the mm -hmm. past and the future. Both is important. But this is an old vineyard. Uh, with old vineyards, it's a little more difficult uh, because every, every vine uh, is growing in a different way uh, and it's always a new situation. If, if there is no real rule for, for pruning uh, these old vines. Uh, the only important thing is for me, and you cannot read this in a book. The important thing is have a look how it was pruned last year and see how the vine did react on that. If it was short and it was growing very strong, then it was too short. Uh, mm -hmm. If it was maybe longer and the, the vine was growing very, very, as a not very strong, like uh, thin uh, shoots like this, mm -hmm. uh, then it was too long. So you have to balance that out. And every vine is different. So you cannot say there's a rule, always two shoots like this. Uh, this might be right for most of the vines, but nor, not for all of them. Some vines can suffer if you prune them too long, and some other vines will suffer because you prune them too short. Yeah. Uh, and if you prune them too short, uh, the shoots get very thick, uh, and those thick um, uh, shoots are not very good for um, handling cold temperatures. So okay. frost aspects... Uh, and here in Vienna, we can have frost until early May. Uh, this is still an issue. Still um, Fritz, Jeannie in South Africa is asking, how old are those vines that you're pruning today? Yeah, uh, Sophie also was asking me. <laughs> I would say between 30 and 40 years. Oh, wow. okay. uh, but looking at the poles, they are still not rusty. So I would say more like 30 oh. instead of 40. That's so interesting. Sophie, can you read that question that Wiener Sixpack asked? It's in German, and I'm afraid to even try to read that. Um, yeah, he repeated uh, what Dad said before. Um, oh, okay. He said, uh, <laughs> because, uh, because it's uh, in Viennese, and he, <laughs> he thought it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I love it. Thank you. Um, Fritz, how do you learn what you're talking about and how do you teach it and how many people does it take to do the pruning each year? Um, 
my pruning or in our winery that is done with about seven people okay. that is uh, uh, people uh, they work for me all year long okay. uh, part of them uh, they drive with tractors uh, during the growing season and do pruning during the winter okay uh, and some are my four workers uh, they, um, I, I still want to keep them in the company during the winter time, so they do the pruning. Okay. Seven, sometimes it's necessary to have help by, uh, by, uh, by labor that is not employed with us. I just call up and say, I need help for one week and a car with five people comes. <laughs> This year we did so for not long, two or three weeks, mm -hmm. and that was it. But mainly our seven people can handle the pruning of okay. about 75 hectares. But it seems, it seems fairly intellectual. Is it something you can learn in an hour and then go work oh. for the week, or do you do it year after year? Well, you can learn it in a season. Okay. Uh, you need a, a minimum if you are good um, and you maybe have uh, experience with pruning apples or something. Oh. You learn it in, in within a few days. Uh, but to be a good pruner, uh, I think a season is necessary. After the first season, in the second season, you can, you know how to do it. You get the feeling because theoretically, when I learned this in winemaking college. Uh, you always count everything right. and you look at the angles and, and so on. But today I'm not looking at this and the, my people don't look at that. They have the feeling. They see uh, from far, they see this, this one shoot and this is already the one they want to use. Everything else, else has to disappear uh, and that is the way they prune. Uh, because if you count everything and always measure everything, you never will get finished with the vineyard. We talk about four to 5,000 vines per hectare. Uh, this is quite a number. Uh, and the speed is also uh, something that is important. Every hour costs money. Uh, so people uh, not only can do this by quality, they, always, they also have to do this um, in a certain speed. Right. Wow. Um, Fritz, we're almost at a half an hour, so I'm going to let you go. I really appreciate you being out in the cold uh, with Sophie. Thank you both. This was really informative. Five I want to remind people of this. I will save this in my IGTV. You can see this another time. That is Vienna in the background. It's just a little foggy there. I've done an interview that I'll post, and then Fritz did, did another pruning chat last week. It's in German, but you can see it's a gorgeous day, and you can see Vienna in the background. And I always have Fritz's wines at my restaurant, so please come by and try them. They're really good, Thank you, and they're, they're good at this time of year. I really like your full-bodied Gemischersatz. It's a great wine. I call it a winter white because it's great in the summer, but it's really good with hearty food in the winter, so it's great all year round. Perfect. Thank you so much. It's really a Thanks pleasure a lot, to see you Jeff. again. My pleasure. Take care. Take care. Bye Stay bye. warm. Thank you, Sophie. Bye-bye now. Bye. -bye.